Hello, and welcome to this presentation about the 12 C's, a framework for successful digital transformation. My name is Lee Huang, and it's a pleasure to introduce you to the 12 C's, its benefits and how you can apply it to your business. So as a little background, I'm a digital strategy and product leader, and I accelerate the adoption of emerging technologies at organizations. And I love living at the intersection between business and tech. I've led digital at leading D2C and B2B companies, such as the ones listed here. And I have a 360 perspective in that I've worked on the business side within IT and also in centralized departments. In addition to working at corporate, I also have worked as a consultant, so I have that viewpoint as well. So after working on many different types of digital transformation and innovation initiatives earlier in my career, I saw and learned what were the key ingredients for delivering success and also what were the mistakes to avoid. So I created the 12 C's based on those experiences. Since then, I've successfully applied the 12 C's and used them on every project that I've worked on, including the ones listed here. So what you'll see from this list is that whether you're planning to launch a new product or a new business, integrating your traditional business with your digital operations or innovating to deploy new technologies to reach new markets, or expand existing customer relationships. The 12 C's can be applied to all different types of projects of different scopes to deliver success and also faster implementation. My goals for this, for this presentation are to introduce you to the 12 C's, the importance of, and value of its holistic view, its benefits, and then how you can apply it to your projects and within your organization. Before diving into the 12 C's, I'd like to first briefly discuss the challenges and threats that we face in order to emphasize the importance of digital transformation and the urgency to do it right the first time. So whether you are a large, medium, or small company, a D to C or B to B or a nonprofit, uh, whether you're, you're a traditional company or digital only, we all face common challenges and threats. So first, <clears throat> um, we face a diverse array of market challenges. Uh, you know, obviously, there are changing customer needs, behaviors, and expectations. Customers now have more choices than ever as you face new competitors and threats of substitute products. There are, you know, many new ways to market, engage, and to sell to them. And power is shifting in many ways to the tech giants. And of course, the impact of global events, force majeure, changing laws, all of those have dramatic effects on our business. Uh, some of which we can't predict. And tech is disrupting all industries and fundamentally how they operate. So, you know, speaking of tech, you likely face many internal tech challenges, whether it's having a myriad of systems that don't operate effectively together, uh, be, it may be necessary to upgrade or migrate legacy systems. It, you probably have initiatives where you have to clean up some dirty data, perhaps consolidate uh, databases, so there's a lot of effort there. Um, might be wondering, hey, should I implement, you know, any of these new emerging technologies uh, that are available? Is it worth it or not? And then looking at performance and scalability and security uh, to make sure the infrastructure is in place. And all of that has costs associated. And also, do you have the right skills and people uh, to take care of the tech side? Organizationally, you need to ensure that you have uh, you know, enough executive support. Um, you know, who's leading your transformation initiatives? Um, are you able to balance project work with people's day jobs? And is the organization really ready for change? And within an organization, also, uh, there are challenges within each department, right? Because they face their own internal challenges. And since their workflow and technology are integrated with other departments, changes in one place will impact and affect other groups. So it's important to look at all of these challenges uh, and, and, and recognize the fact that they're all integrated, right? So that you're looking at them holistically and not as silos because they impact your business. Um, and, and also by looking at holistically, you have a way that you can then uh, effectively respond to them. And of course, change also brings opportunities. So digital transformation is a way to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is exactly where the 12 C's come in. 
So these are the 12 C's and they are the core components of transformation. So I wanna try and read these 12 C's in one breath. Corporate, customers, competitors, customer experience, content, commerce, connections, conversions, community, computers, collaboration, and care. When you start the strategic planning for your initiative and as you proceed through execution, it's important to have a clear understanding of each of the 12 C's and it's vital to look at them holistically. Taking a holistic view and recognizing that each of the C's is linked to the others and that they are all part of an ecosystem is a tenet of the 12 C's framework as it enables you to create a comprehensive strategy and then to execute. It's important to stop looking at the C's as silos. So for example, whether you're launching a new business or creating a new product, when you think about your customer needs and expectations, you should also think about the customer experience, what content is necessary to support them, your commerce strategy for monetizing and what your conversion rates will be and should be, what computers and databases need to be in place and then how to deliver great customer care. So you heard a lot of C's, uh, so I'm sure you get the idea. So for the 12 C's and a holistic view of that sort of uh, that, that ecosystem, what it allows you to do is that you can now very efficiently and effectively consider all the factors, right? Whether it's on the business side, tech, market, organization, and you now have your eyes wide open because you're looking end to end, right? At all the 12 C's and therefore you can anticipate and proactive. And most importantly, then you can perform many tasks in parallel. And so by doing all of this, you have a clearer scope and you can clearly define your priorities and uh, put together a plan that goes all the way through design, build, deliver, operationalize, and execute on that um, uh, very effectively again, because you mapped it all out. And it also allows you to align your organization and your staff on what they're doing and what their roles and responsibilities are. So there's, there's clarity at the, at the beginning and no surprises, um, you know, as you move through the uh, as you move through the initiative, and so the results are success and faster delivery. Okay, because again, you're looking holistically and you're doing more things in parallel. Um, there are um, you have de-risked, so you've dramatically reduced missteps, blind spots, unexpected surprises. So, so by delivering faster, um, you're realizing the gain sooner and you're obviously saving time and costs. And because of that and the successes and the clarity, you know, you're know you gonna have a strong team camaraderie uh, that's developed along the way and certainly will last after you've completed and then all the different stakeholders um, that will benefit will be, uh, will be quite happy as well. Let's drill down on each of the 12 Cs now and let's start with corporate as the first C. I like to start here because corporate refers to uh, an organization and its culture and its people. Obviously any initiative uh, starts with you, know, you, your colleagues and other people within an organization. So, you know, transformation, digital innovation is, it's hard work. Uh, so you do wanna be realistic at the beginning as to how much, um, you know, how much can be accomplished. So you need to look at your company, the culture, its history, and look at, you know, is there a track record of change? You know, is it baked into their DNA where they uh, have, have experienced with it? Um, uh, or is it more of an organization where there, re there really hasn't been too much change or maybe the industry doesn't move as quick? So get a good handle on uh, the tolerance for, uh, for change, as that'll impact how much you can do. But regardless of the scope of that, You've got to have executive support. Uh, so you need the executive team behind you at the beginning and throughout um, to really uh, be a leader uh, with you in, uh, in moving the initiative forward. Another key role is to have an experienced leader and architect who has a holistic view, really the 12 C's view and experience. And so uh, an analogy that I like to use, which I'll say for another time, is basically that you need Bruce Lee to lead a Star Wars team um, to, to to deliver on the 12 C's and to have uh, successful implementation. And, um, and that leader, the experienced leader, uh, will know from the beginning, right, that there will be people within an organization who support change uh, and those that don't, who prefer things to stay uh, as is, status quo. So it's important to identify those people, which I 
uh, you know, referred to sometimes as resistors to get them on board, get them aligned, um, because uh, if not, then they can really slow down an initiative. And it's also key to get the business and IT groups to work effectively together. So that's easier said than done, but the leader should, again, be able to speak in both the languages of business and IT, understand both their perspectives and be able to get alignment uh, on them so that they work as a single unit. The second C to talk about would be customers. So whether you're uh, D to C or B to B and have customers and consumers, or perhaps you have clients um, or corporate users, right? Your internal users. It's important to have clarity on, you know, basically what problem am I solving for them? You know, how can I make their lives easier? What value am I creating? And it's important to know your target, you know, your customers, their demographics, their behaviors, but also important to recognize that their needs and expectations uh, are changing and evolving. So whereas, uh, you know, perhaps you did analysis of their needs, you know, a few years ago, uh, things may have changed by now and you may want to revisit. So it's obviously clear uh, that you have a really good understanding of your customers in order to, um, you know, to meet their needs. So the next C is competitors. You probably have a pretty good understanding on your traditional competitors, but it's really important that you uh, identify the competitors that don't look like you, that don't think like you, that don't behave like you, and that may not be funded like you. So I like to use um, Netflix as an example where, you know, they've said obviously they know who their competitors are. Uh, their direct competitors such as you know Hulu and others um, but they really fear Fortnite right which is uh, obviously a gaming company because any minute that somebody is playing Fortnite is a minute that they're not spending on Netflix so uh, I like that as a pretty good example on you know fearing competitors that that don't look like you um, but with your competitors uh, it's just important to know who they are and then be able to differentiate right, your offerings, and to establish lo loyalty amongst your customer base. You know, there are many different ways to do that. Uh, and then also to try and establish defendable positions so that you don't lose them to your competitors. Uh, the fourth C would be customer or user experience. So, uh, you know, as you're designing your products or services or tools, uh, and if it's, you know, the online component using personas or user-centered design, I uh, just, you know, create amazing friction-free experiences that solve pain points, that deliver happiness, you know, if it's entertainment, it's always good to, you know, put a smile on someone's face. So having personalized, relevant experiences and recommendations um, are key, but it's also important to have serendipitous moments when hopefully, again, you can surprise your customers and your users um, with with something that they didn't expect, but get, they get value out of. I think those are very memorable and meaningful. And of course, uh, from a customer experience perspective, you're looking and thinking about all of the different touch points that you have, whether it's online, in person, uh, you know, at a store or an event. Um, so you really do want to look holistically at the customer experience because it is a sum of all of their touch points and engagements with you. The fifth C would be content. So, you know, there are many different types of content, right? Whether it's text content, images, videos, voice, uh, augmented reality content, virtual reality content. But at the end of the day, uh, content is about storytelling. And so whether you are a publisher, right, or a studio and, you know, inter uh, entertainment uh, or educational content is your business, or you're creating content for content marketing, or for e-commerce product descriptions, or for case studies to try and either educate or to convert on sales, um, or creating metadata, right, for your, um, you know, for SEO. It's important to have a, a full view on your content strategy, how to create it, who's creating it, how are you doing QA, and then how you are you getting your content to all of your different uh, endpoints uh, via distribution. And um, the other thing that I would encourage is that, you know, all this content, if you have it in a, a single database that you can 
repackage it, repurpose it, leverage it in many ways, again, to uh, perhaps create new products or to create um, you know, different offerings. So, so there's a lot to do with content. The sixth C would be commerce. And, you know, if possible, it's always good to have multiple revenue streams, whether it's, you know, ads and sponsorships, e-commerce sales, premium content, licensing, revenue, uh, affiliate uh, income. I, you know, I've, I've, I've led strategy at companies where we built out multiple revenue streams, which was very, very uh, crucial, you know, when one revenue stream dipped or stalled, uh, but, uh, but all the others uh, we're going well, or perhaps even growing to uh, to balance out the uh, the decline in one of the streams. And so, for uh, for customers, whether they're buying online or in store, um, yeah, make it just friction free, really easy. Um, obviously, there are policies with shipping and handling and returns. Just you need to know what your competitors are doing, what's going on in the market, and make sure that you're um, adjusting if necessary, right? To, to make it as as convenient as possible for the customers. Omnichannel, you know, goes without saying uh, to bring together physical and digital. And there are new buying experiences, obviously a lot of the new different, you know, um, sort of contactless payment methods. Those are things to think about uh, and plan for and implement. And, um, you know, a lot of times people think just about the front end side of, of commerce, but uh, the supply chain, the back end, the warehouses, inventory management, the you know physical shipping of products is is really key. So uh, again, you need to be looking at commerce holistically and holistically within the twelve C's. Because if you know if your product is going well and customers are buying it, you have to make sure that your back end is also able to uh, deliver the product, whether physical goods or digital. Seventh C would be connections. And so it's really important to be able to reach and connect with, uh, you know, future customers as well as existing ones through, you know, an integrated uh, multi-pronged marketing strategy, you know, inclusive of advertising and publicity and PR. Um, but the way I, I sort of like to look at it is that you have to have uh, many doorways um, that you can connect uh, with the, um, you know, with your audience and your customers that they can then walk through. And these doorways should be convenient for them to access and to discover and should be very attractive that they want to, if you will, walk through the doorway to engage with you. Uh, and throughout all of this, um, whether it's online marketing, you know, out of home, um, physical in store, whatever it is, there should be very clear and consistent messaging and delivery of your value proposition. Conversions would be the eighth C. So conversions would be, you know, your the, the marketing team and the marketing funnel. Um, at the end of the day, they have to convert and their conversion leads into uh, sales and helping sales close the deal. So, you know, there are conversion rates and different metrics that need to be tracked. Um, but ideally, again, you're implementing solutions that will increase um, all of the numbers in both the marketing and sales side of conversions. And then with customers, um, you know, from a subscription perspective, looking at how uh, conversions are working from free trials to paid uh, renewal rates, uh, how many customers are upgrading. So there's a number of different conversion metrics that need to be looked at and planned for. Community. So, uh, so I think usually when we talk about community, we think about you know customers and social media, and obviously that's huge and just growing more and more complex. And, 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 and critical to, um, to organizations. You know, it's key to have a finger on the pulse, although that's quite difficult because things are changing very rapidly, you know, in society today. But bottom line is, um, you know, everyone has a bullhorn. So uh, you've got sort of your strategy on community. Sometimes a community or an individual has their own plans and you have to be able to react and adapt and, uh, uh, and handle you know, again, anyone with a bullhorn who may be saying something that uh, isn't favorable about you and then how to handle it, uh, how to handle it and how to also quickly sort of escalate within your organization and how to, uh, you know, get the message across your organization. So then again, 
when you're reaching out to the community in different ways that is very consistent. Um, in addition, other communities are your internal staff, right? So they are a community um, that you need to support. And if your product or transformation is related to them, again, um, they are then your customers. You, companies are really part of a global community. So uh, as things happen in other countries, um, they could affect your business. So, uh, you know, you're part of a global community. And similarly, the government at both national and state levels are um, part of your community as well because as they pass laws or change laws, uh, that can have an impact on your business and your organization in many different ways. The 10th C is computers and technology. The importance and impact of computers and new technologies obviously continues to grow with each passing day. It's no longer only IT who has a tech stack, marketing has a tech stack, and there's even a sales tech stack. As the number of systems that need to be managed grows, it's vital to keep an eye on how to integrate all of these systems when necessary and also to be able to share data between them. Your database is a gold mine. If you can properly mine your customer database, your content database, transactional database, and turn these findings into deliverables. It's also important to experiment and leverage with emerging technologies such as AI, augmented reality, and voice, as they can deliver a variety of different business benefits. Uh, these are tools, and it's important to think of them as tools that are in your arsenal that you can use to drive customer engagement by delivering new user experiences. And you can also derive uh, new insights and predictions uh, that you couldn't before. The 11th C is collaboration. So no company is an island, right? You need to think about what you want to do internally from a core competency perspective and when you need to collaborate. Uh, so whether it's collaborating with content partners, technology vendors, uh, ad networks, offshore development, um, freelance designers, it's important that you have a good evaluation and selection process and ideally uh, you know, establish win-win deals. Um, which is always good for both parties. The 12th C is care. Customer service, tech support, sales reps, account managers, professional services, uh, marketers handling social media are all key touch points with your customer. So it's really important that all the groups deliver amazing and well-coordinated customer care and hopefully it's part of your culture. Systems and tools can be implemented to support customer care to ensure that everybody on the front line is up to speed on new product features, uh, new marketing uh, campaigns and offers and promotions, as well as any technical problems that may have just uh, popped up. Uh, in addition, with these systems and tools, if you're able to capture interactions, then that is uh, a great input to product development as well as continuous improvement. Plus, it's always great if you can surprise and delight your customers with unexpected high quality of service, personalized follow-ups and proactive communications and offers. And uh, even if you can deliver some nice unexpected goodies to customers every once in a while, I think that goes a long way in, again, uh, making a good impression on them and a good reason for them to uh, share their, ex their positive experiences with their friends and family. To put the 12 C's into another perspective, customers and competitors represent what's going on in the market. Customer experience, content, commerce, connections, conversions, community, and care, that's the engagement layer, which is where your customers and clients are uh, interacting with your products and services, and your, uh, your team that's on the front line is also, again, communicating and supporting um, the customers. Corporate computers collaboration is the infrastructure layer, and that's really what's going on within your company and your uh, different partners and what's in place to support all of the C's and the layers above. So we started out by looking at the different types of business challenges that an organization has, and of course there are also many different opportunities uh, that an organization can pursue and then delved into how the 12 C's, when you look at each C individually and drill down, and then 
most importantly, look at all of the 12 C's holistically and how they all tie together and are integrated, that by leveraging the 12 C's framework, you will be able to take advantage of the opportunities that you have and to also address the business challenges uh, successfully. So to wrap up, the 12 C's is a framework for digital transformation and innovation. It's a holistic view of the ecosystems of all the C's and takes you all the way from strategy to execution. And it delivers success. So faster delivery, uh, it enables you to anticipate and de-risk, and it really aligns your organization so that all the stakeholders and participants are motivated um, and really work effectively as a team. And to implement the 12 C's, it is important to have an experienced leader and architect who can again bring everything together from a business and technology perspective and bring your organization and all the people together. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to, uh, to attend this presentation. If you have any questions or anything that you'd like to follow up on, I invite you to email me and also to connect through LinkedIn. So again, thank you for your time and I hope to see you soon.